Thank you very much. So, good morning, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and a special thank you for the German Ambassador for having me here. Um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll take you through uh, some thoughts. Um, first of all, it's already elaborated, <clears throat> climate change is an issue. Um, the innovation capacity of Europe is an issue as well. Um, but I'm going to talk very much about the, uh, the opportunities. Uh, my name is, uh, was already mentioned, is uh, Bertrand Van Ey. Uh, I joined Climate Kick about uh, five months ago. Uh, I have uh, 31 years of uh, experience in business. And one of the reasons I joined Climate Kick is because I think uh, climate change is a business opportunity. So that's what I'll focus on as well. You've heard some high-level uh, discussions, and I'll try to bring it down to some uh, concrete examples, uh, but also some of the opportunities that, uh, that exist in, um, in Hungary. Let's see. Uh, the, the innovation community is very much built around our partners. Uh, we have partners from three sectors. It's very much the academia, research institutions, and business. And it's basically by bringing together the knowledge triangle, as it's called, with European money, we're looking at accelerating ideas to the market. And you can see that the, the partners are contributing 430 million euros in 2015. We've been growing about 20% per annum, by the way. And the EIT. Uh, which is part of the Horizon 2020 program, uh, is supporting that with an additional 91 million. So we have a program of 521 million this year. And so what we're basically doing is take programs that our partners have, uh, and some of it is uh, in kind, but there is also cash contribution uh, by partners, matching that with European money, and then see how we can accelerate the ideas to the market. Uh, I won't dwell too much, but if you take the um, top right-hand chart, which basically, or let's say let's, uh, top left, is uh, what the, the climate looked like in the last century, uh, 1880 to 1884. If you take the picture of the, uh, the 1950s, uh, you can see it's uh, getting more yellow. Obviously, yellow is warmer and the red is very warm. And you can see what's happening in 2010, 2014. So, you know, th th this is reality. Uh, they're just saying, and uh, by now, uh, people say uh, humans have a role in, in this whole equation, so there's something to do about it. Every time I uh, talk to audiences like this, um, you know, somehow there is a, a lack of the younger generation. I feel very, very strong that in terms of climate, it's very much our generation, my generation, that needs to report to the next generation. And it's our obligation is to leave the world in a better place than what we, uh, when we entered into it. Uh, so also in, in speakers, it's good to get those younger uh, generations to talk as well, so maybe they can follow up with some questions, because it is important. Uh, this is just another uh, picture um, uh, at the, uh, the IPCC, and uh, two of our governing board members were part of the IPCC panel that uh, won the, the Nobel Prize, so I'm very fortunate to sit with very distinguished people, uh, Professor Sal Huber and uh, Professor Zuzal. Um, we're keeping track of what's happening and then uh, in terms of uh, major events uh, and the, the bottom line major events uh, are going up. Uh, so major events is typically something uh, that uh, you have to deal with in terms of adaptation and by now I think people know that there's the two sides of climate. There's Adaptation, what is it that you have to do because the climate is changing? It's mostly investment in uh, infrastructure and it's mostly a, a public sector responsibility. Um, that costs money. Um, then there is the mitigation side. Uh, how can we move towards a low carbon economy? Um, and in fact, that's the sexy side and that's still the opportunity side. But we have to do both. Um, 
So I've already indicated that uh, climate is both uh, mitigation and, uh, and adaptation. Um, we believe very strong that to, to get the innovations to the market quicker, it needs a combined action. I think that was also uh, at the, the earlier remarks that it is something that we have to do together. Uh, and in this case, it's between business, academia, citizens, and governments. Um, we believe it's a great opportunity for creating a green growth, uh, uh, green type uh, business. And from a climate kick perspective, we're, we're very much in a key position, not, not only because of the funds available, but also for the spot, climate is becoming a very relevant topic. On everything we do, we'd like to have impact, number one, on the climate, because that's what we're about. Number two is about the, uh, the economy, because uh, we believe that climate uh, is business. And thirdly, everything we need to do uh, needs to have an uh, emotional impact. It was mentioned in some speeches before. Uh, but if we all go from this conference and we don't change our lives personally, um, unfortunately, I believe that nothing much is going to change. I think it's very, climate change is one of those things where it starts with making a personal decision. And it may some, sound strange. You, you can think whatever you want to think, but uh, in my uh, corporate life, of course, I had a, uh, a number of cars. That's how it goes. You have your business car and you have your toy for the weekend. Um, and when I took up this, this, uh, this job, uh, um, I felt very strong that I had to sell my toys. Uh, I can tell you that's, uh, it's very painful <laughs> to do. But it is something you have to do. And if you don't make those personal decisions, um, then, it's, uh, then you don't feel the real uh, intensity of what climate change is really about. The other challenge we have is the innovation challenge. Uh, we know where Europe is ranking, um, and EIT, as part of the Horizon 2020 program, is very much focused of doing something about the, uh, the, the gap we have with, uh, for instance, the United States. So EIT, which is, by the way, uh, located the headquarters uh, here in Budapest, um, has by now five of these knowledge and innovation communities, uh, one around energy, one around ICT, one around uh, health, one around raw materials, and we are about uh, climate. Very good uh, collaboration together. Uh, total program is 2.7 billion, so it's qu quite a bit of money. You can see what, uh, from a climate kick perspective, uh, on the left-hand side, and I won't, won't dwell too much, it was, uh, you see, uh, we're growing uh, very rapidly, uh, a, a good mix of academy, academia, um, research, big business, but also SMEs. Uh, you see we're now in, uh, in 12 uh, countries in, in Europe, and for uh, this year, we're reaching out to, uh, to also the fringes of, of Europe because our ambition is basically to be in all the countries in Europe so we're accessible to all. Um, there's basically three streams. We start with education, um, and it's very much touching uh, master students to take an interest in climate. Um, and it's very much those master students that would want to follow on with a PhD uh, and those that uh, want to uh, further and move from PhD into their own entrepreneurial business, uh, that's the second stage. So the first stage is all around education and you can see that uh, we've now, uh, we got 129 master programs. Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and the journeys, there are all these th different things. There's 295 uh, students uh, this year, so it's an opportunity for these students to also visit other uh, universities. Uh, then we can move them into a greenhouse so to, we can get them into the, the, the startups. And uh, so that's the, that's the second uh, step. And you can see that uh, um, to date we've had over 500 uh, applicants and we take them through different stages. Um, and uh, by now, we have 45, so for the original intake of uh, 500, through the different stages, uh, we now have 
45 startups and they've raised 59 million uh, euros. So, so this is what job creation is about. You know, this, forget about all the, the fancy. This, this is real stuff. This is ideas in the green economy space uh, that's attracting uh, money in the, in the commercial markets. So we get education movement to entrepreneurship and we all bring it together in innovation programs. And this is where we bring biz, big business, SME, academia, together around specific uh, programs. We focus on four themes. One is the transition to low carbon cities, and I'll give you a, a couple of examples uh, what's happening on the ground. The second theme is the zero carbon production uh, system, so that's where we're working with uh, big business, you know, the, the, the buyers of this world. Uh, we got uh, adaptive uh, water management that is very much around the, uh, what you need to do uh, for your uh, adaptation. You know, we all know that the, uh, there's more floodings going on and you, you, you see the, the issues here in, in Hungary locally as well. Um, and then we have the, the fourth one is uh, all around measurements. There's still a lot of discussion about measurements, what are we measuring and we need to come up with, with better benchmarks. So let me take you through the example of uh, cities, uh, which is one of the four themes. Um, when we talked about, uh, you saw the earlier uh, number, which uh, uh, Dimitri mentioned, with the, the 90 trillion uh, that's uh, for, for uh, infrastructure. You see uh, that the uh, market for cities is just big. It's 7 uh, trillion uh, euros. So that's through 2030, so if you take that down, it's 230 billion uh, per year. Uh, obviously, there is the, the, the various uh, market drivers, uh, and if you look at the market segments, especially for Europe, is one is around retrofitting existing uh, cities, and, and, and then uh, there's also the expansion uh, of cities. Um, now, we work with, um, our, our view is very much um, and there you see climate kick in the middle, uh, how we bring the city authorities, uh, the utilities and the mobility, the research business, the citizens and the academia together. Um, and this is something, uh, you know, there's a lot of people in the, in the space obviously, and, and we're, we're positioning, but let me move on also in terms of time to, to some real examples. In this case, we now work with, seven, uh, with 11 districts, and those are all districts within cities that have formulated a ambition. And uh, you know the C, uh, C20, but, but there is uh, cities with a clear ambition, but they all need examples on the ground. Because the ambition is great, but then there is a traction for us to work with. Um, and what we're trying to do is, uh, in these districts, uh, boost the district-wide resource efficiency, so very much bring the citizens, the energy companies all together so we can boost that resource uh, uh, efficiency. Secondly is the energy consumption, you know, with the 40, 27, 27, the biggest opportunity we have right now is save energy because every unit of energy saved is about three units produced. So that's by far the, the, the biggest challenge that we have. Um, then we have, uh, what's very important that in, in all these policies we think about integration uh, and that we, we demonstrate the value of the innovative uh, solutions. Um, and for us it's important and that's on the, on the bottom so we're at a local level, we're looking at real uh, examples. Those examples need to be able to be replicable and scalable. So the whole idea, and you see the uh, districts on the, uh, on the right, so there's uh, Utrecht Central Station in the Netherlands, by the way, that, that's the picture that you see. You see that the new central station has a uh, roof which is all uh, solar panels. Uh, but we're working with the uh, railway company, with the, uh, uh, with the uh, real estate uh, developer and all the shops that are in this uh, station, uh, obviously with the municipality to make it a hub, and this is uh, 100 million passengers a year by the way, to make it a total self-sufficient uh, green hub. Now you see uh, others, uh, Paris is uh, on board, London is on board, Gothenburg, uh, Berlin, Copenhagen, uh, Rennes, uh, Zurich, so big cities, and again coming up with real examples so when we talk about it we can go to the spot and show people 
this is what's happening and then it's uh, how can we make that uh, replicable and scalable. The other example is uh, what we do very much uh, um, in cities itself and these are all examples of startups. So uh, in the, 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 the 45 startups that I mentioned earlier, we're looking at how we can give those startups an opportunity to test our products in cities. So uh, top left, um, you see that uh, this is greenhouse gas inventory uh, and vent verification services. And it's very much about standardization. Um, again, there's a lot of different discussion, but if we don't have a standard, it's very difficult to compare one city to another. And there's too much time lost in translation, as we say, you know, uh, what, is your, what is really behind your measurement versus my measurement. If you have a clean benchmark, it makes life a lot easier. If you go to the uh, top right hand, um, this is a quite exciting uh, technology where you start, uh, at the beginning you saw basically the 2D map. So what we're doing right now, and, and this is by the way, uh, th we're testing this in, in Paris, and uh, we're on track to also show it at COP21, um, is to take the, the 3D measurements so you can actually see where the, the emissions come from, whether it's from buildings or obviously from the mobility, but it becomes much more real life. I got one, uh, one more. Uh, this is the last slide by almost the last slide. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's uh, the real-time monitoring. That's very much what's happening around systems, so you can uh, act and decide uh, quicker. And the last one is very simple technology using cell phone uh, technology to, uh, uh, to take traffic pro and then also come up with decisions. Um, we've been in, uh, in Hungary uh, active in education, entrepreneurship, innovation. We believe Hungary has a very important role to play, not only for Hungary, but also as gateway to Eastern Europe. Uh, we've been offering services to the academia, business and uh, research. Uh, we're ready to be of uh, further service. Is Laszlo here? I think he's bare in, bare in the back. So if you have any more questions, that's, uh, that's Laszlo. That's his, uh, his telephone number. Um, and I think very important, so that, you know, then we can make sure that uh, climate is business. Um, of those accelerators uh, that I showed you, uh, for all those ideas that actually make it uh, through the program, this is a package that's, uh, that's uh, valued up to uh, 100,000 uh, K. It basically takes a startup through the different stages. Uh, so this is, this is real to get new, new ideas into business and job creation. So the submission date is the 15th of, uh, of May. And uh, with that, I thank you very much.